Does hip arthritis on an x-ray actually diagnose hip pain? In today's video, you will learn if a hip x-ray can accurately diagnose hip pain. And as well, we're going to be going over hip x-ray images and how that is written out and described on an x-ray report so you can understand it better. Hi, I'm Dr. Josh. Hi, I'm Dr. Christina, and we're chiropractors in Newmarket, Ontario, Canada. Now don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon if you want to be notified every time we post. Our videos are full of quality content, giving you tips to help improve your quality of life. Now let's get on with the show. Am I supposed to <laughs> so the answer is yes and no, because really you can have arthritis in your hip and that could be causing the pain, or you can have pain in your hip and not have any arthritis, or you can actually have arthritis in your hip and that's actually not the cause of your pain. So today we're going to break those down so that you can get a better look of what we're actually looking at. So what we're going to do now is go through a hip x-ray so that you can see exactly what we're looking for and what it will look like on x-ray if you're having some arthritic or arthritic changes, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the x-ray here that we're looking at and what you're seeing is this is your femur, so this is your thigh bone right here. Okay, my pointing is not that great. Right there. <laughs> so right there. Yeah, right there. And this is the, the ball joint, basically, and mm -hmm. we call it the head of the femur. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it sits right in the hip joint here, which is actually called the acetabulum, mm -hmm. which and is if, a big fancy word. And if this is the head, then that makes that the... Neck. The neck. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> And so it sits in the acetabulum and there's a, a space here you can see maybe hopefully I can also put up some pictures on the screen mm -hmm. so you can see it a little better but there's a space there at the top and we want to keep that space nice and thick mm -hmm. because when there's a proper amount of space there then the joint is functioning properly and also on the inside yeah. too. That, that space is basically filled with cartilage and yeah. so that's the the the, the tissue that actually you know, gives you the lubrication, gives you the smoothness in the joint. But you can't pick it up, it's not calcified, so you don't pick it up on x-ray. So you don't see it, you just see the spaces. You just see the spaces. And that's why we want a space, because if you have a good space, it means the cartilage is really healthy and thick. That's it, exactly. When you're looking at an x-ray, not only do you want to look at the joint spaces, so for this, in this case, the, the cartilage and the joint, mm -hmm. but you also want to look at the bone too as well. Mm -hmm. And as you can see from this x-ray, this is a normal x-ray, yeah. the bone is all the same color for the most part along the whole thing. You can see some of the, we call the trabeculae, which is the, the way the bone is actually laid down in the hip itself. But for the most part, everything's about the same color. And that's, that's good. That's normal. Uh, the density is, is solid and mm -hmm. it's a healthy hip. Yeah. Now this is an unhealthy Hip. This is one that has arthritis. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at it, you can tell obviously the quality of the x-ray is a little bit different. So things are going to be a little bit different as far as color. Yeah. But you can see that the, the, the bone itself is not all the same. You have more white in certain areas, specifically a lot of white at the top part, the rounded area, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. on the acetabulum or in the hip socket itself. And what that white is, is that's just chronic inflammation in the bone. And so there's more bone laid down. It's a sign that things just aren't working, working well. But not only that, but it hasn't been working well for a very, very long time for the body to do that. Bone doesn't form really quickly. It's slow. It's slow, yeah. So if you have bone change, you know it's happened over a long period of time. It's been there for quite a while. It's been there for a while. Yeah. So then obviously with the joint itself, I mean, you can barely see it now, mm -hmm. right? So this is actually pretty advanced. Um, if you're having a little milder case of arthritis, like it's just beginning, mm -hmm. you just start to see a slight shortening of the, the hip joint space at the top there um, and then the worse the more advanced it gets then the space becomes smaller and smaller to the point where the cartilage is gone mm -hmm. and it's just rubbing bone on bone mm -hmm. which is very painful <laughs> yeah. and so in the milder cases you might not have any pain at all mm -hmm. right yeah. and like we mentioned and then as it gets worse and worse, then you might start to feel uh, more, more, more pain over time. And then, of course, uh, hip replacement is, you know, the right. end goal, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at the cartilage in hip two as well, 
um, because the hip joint takes a lot of weight, the way that it usually breaks down, it breaks down actually using kind of two steps. Mm -hmm. First, it starts breaking down up and in, kind mm -hmm. of like along the line of the, the neck of the, of the, mm -hmm. of the femur. Femur, yep. Um, but then as that starts breaking down, as the cart use the cartilage there, which this person has, they have no cartilage there, mm -hmm. then it starts rising up and then you'll start seeing damage at the top part. So you can actually even grade how bad it is based on <clears throat> which level it is. If you have a lot of cartilage at the top and none there, mm -hmm. then it's, it's hasn't got to the point where full replacement. No, that's it. And full replacement, yeah, I mean, it's basically no, no cartilage, no cartilage and it's all, no and it's ability. usually right into the socket, like Josh said, but it's also rising up and you'll have bone uh, spurs that come down over top because there's just, because of the loss of the hip joint space, the body is reacting to that and it's reacting to the, the inflammation. So the bone starts to creep down and you'll see a lot more bone spurs. So if you have had an x-ray of your hip, you've probably seen the report, and there's certain words that they often use. Obviously, they use words like osteoarthritis uh, for the general terminology. They may, you, you may see words like uh, subchondral uh, sclerosis, right, or even some sub subchond subchondral or cysts that are available. What those things, what that means is basically mm -hmm. the sclerosis is the whitening. It's the increased bone formation around the joint because of the chronic inflammation. So it means that it's, it's been there for a while. For the cysts, what the cysts are basically is they're basically pockets of fluid that can actually develop inside the bone. And it's mm -hmm. a sign of very, very chronic inflammation that's been in there for the area and a very advanced form of arthritis. Yeah, if, if you're talking about a more mild case, it might just say that there's a slight decrease in the hip joint space. Mm -hmm. And that's the space that we were talking about at the top here, because that's one of the forms of measurement that they use. There's, you have to have a certain number of millimeters there for it to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And then with the decrease in that, you know, it's slightly advancing uh, arthritis. So you might just hear talk about there's a mild hip joint decrease mm -hmm. in the space. So one of the most common symptoms that patients have when they have hip arthritis is that actually pain into the groin so the pain can actually radiate to the groin mm -hmm. if they get pain in the hip itself oftentimes if a patient comes in and they point directly to the hip that can be a problem with the hip but most of the time it actually is the lower back because mm -hmm. the lower back can refer an SI joint can refer pain to the hip itself now the lower back can also refer pain to the groin along with that as well so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if you have those types of pain it doesn't necessarily mean that you have hip arthritis now, if they take an x-ray and they find arthritis, they might say that's cause of your pain, but unless you're taking a, seeing a, a chiropractor who actually will look at the lower back and at the SI joints, um, you may be misdiagnosed for actually what the real problem is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if you have any biomechanical changes too, right? Because I yeah. think we mentioned this as well, in the low back, in the hip or the SI joint rather, um, that can create more pressure in that hip mm -hmm. and be a source of the arthritic changes. Mm -hmm. So it's very prudent to get a full picture and get checked out, make sure your spine is checked mm -hmm. out properly by, by a chiropractor so that all the angles are being taken care of. Mm -hmm. So real life stories that we actually have seen in the past, um, I, we've had patients come in to see us in the office who had hip pain, Yeah, <laughs> they came with x-rays from the doctor that showed arthritis in the hip, and we started taking care of them, obviously, to take care of the biomechanical issues associated with it, mm -hmm. and as we took care of the spine, the hip pain went away, and they didn't actually have to have their hip surgery, which that's was fantastic, awesome. yeah, that's which is awesome. what they wanted to do. <laughs> but we've also seen the opposite. I've had mm -hmm. patients who've come in my office for lower back pain, and hip pain, we've taken care of them, and in the end, I've actually referred them out to actually uh, get their hip taken care of, because even though the spine, the SI and everything was great and they were feeling so good, we needed to actually take care of it because the, the hip got it worse. Was and it, needed to, it was too advanced and they needed to be replaced. So um, sometimes the hip is the cause of the problem, sometimes it's sometimes not. It's not. And so <laughs> the bottom line is, is you need to get checked regardless. Exactly. <laughs> and adjusted by a chiropractor. And adjusted, yes. So for my story, I had a patient come in and she had already had one hip replaced and she was waiting for the second hip. She was having a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort. I mean, it was basically bone on bone. And so we started treating her. She was kind of reluctant at first because she's like, well, is this really going to help? Should, it, should I even bother? Maybe I should wait until after, you know, the, the surgery. 
And I was like, no, this is a great time. This is where we, you know, get everything aligned. We prep your body. We, you know, get everything working as best we can so that afterwards your recovery will be a lot easier on you. And it's true. It really went so much faster for her afterwards. She was on her feet well sooner mm -hmm. than a lot of people yeah. normally are. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she came back in and we continued treating her and she felt really great. So her recovery went fantastically. I've had patients where um, they've come to see me before their surgery mm -hmm. and even at, once they're able to get back in and we're able to take care of them. And more than one physiotherapist has, has, has said, keep seeing your chiropractor because <laughs> the rehab went so easy and they responded so well post-surgery, right? Yeah. That it was, it made their job so much easier. So awesome. um, not only is it beneficial for you, it just saves just time and energy and effort, you know, recovery. Yeah, in the recovery phase. Yeah. So thanks so much for watching everyone. That's it for the video today. We really appreciate it if you stayed to the end of the video. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we post a video. And don't forget to like and share the video with anybody you feel could benefit. And please leave a comment. We'd love to hear what you think. Uh, what, not only about this video, but if you have any questions about hip, hip pain, mm -hmm. um, or any other topic that you might be interested in, or any question that you might have, according to your, you know, that we might be able to help. Yeah. So thanks again so much for watching, and we're going to see you in the next video. Okay, great. Bye. Bye.